Uh, hello, guys, again. Uh, I think uh, we shall start. And uh, today uh, we have a webinar uh, with uh, Denis Chesnokov, he's from Moscow. Uh, Denis is a good friend of uh, ours and a good friend of uh, uh, YMG. And uh, his topic today is uh, behavior investigation of uh, powder actuated shear connectors in composite beams with profile sheetings. Uh, I have to introduce Denis. Uh, so uh, Denis is a PhD student in uh, Moscow State University of uh, Civil Engineering. Uh, his uh, work experience is uh, six years and uh, he is a codes and approvals engineer in uh, Hilti uh, company in uh, Moscow, Russia. His uh, research interests uh, composite structures, steel deck formwork, and uh, fastening solutions. Uh, we know uh, Denise as a usual participant of our YMG actions, and uh, I think uh, he will continue our good uh, our good. Uh, initiative in the field of uh, FIP YMG groups. Uh, I think uh, Denise uh, can start. Thank you guys. Thank you dear uh, participants. It's great pleasure for me uh, to be here today. And thank you Andre for the good introduction. Uh, well, uh, let's begin from the scratch. Uh, today I'm going to present you a, a part of my research. Uh, which is devoted to uh, shear connection uh, in composite beams. And uh, we will start uh, from the background. I will uh, uh, tell you a few words uh, about shear connectors, what we know about uh, it uh, right now, and uh, uh, what uh, things uh, that we have could be applied to uh, nailed shear connectors or, or created shear connectors as we uh, announced in the title. Uh, then I will go deeper to my own PhD research, which is devoted to this uh, topic. I will share with you some testing data, some analysis, uh, some issues maybe. And uh, in the final, uh, we will uh, see its first conclusions and further steps, which I'm going to uh, have uh, in further years. And so I hope that today you will learn something new and something interesting. And so, uh, let's, let's begin. Uh, composite beam, what is it? And so what is the topic for, for us today? It's a structure that always have three parts. It's a, a steel beam, uh, usually I section, but it could be channel or something like that. Uh, then we have a concrete slab which could be solid, as you could see on the left side of the slide, or could be made with uh, a formwork of, uh, made of uh, steel decking. And the most pivotal thing of this structure is uh, shear uh, connectors, uh, which uh, are uh, installing, uh, they are placed between the steel and concrete uh, along the contact surface and uh, they make uh, these parts working together. And uh, in the structure, they resist the shear force that uh, I think obvious from the naming and uh, they prevent the end slip of the slab. Uh, and uh, uh, in final, we have a structure which uh, uh, according to this interaction, bears more and uh, have better stiffness uh, than uh, 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 parts uh, which are working separately. And uh, uh, what kind of shear connectors could be placed in our structures? I want to offer you a simple classification, uh, which uh, have two uh, properties. The first one, it's a fastening solution, and the connectors could be welded to the uh, steel beam. They could be fastened by nails, sometimes screws, but it's not uh, often. And in some cases, they could be bolted and uh, through the uh, top flange of the beam and fastened by two nuts. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's clear. 
Uh, and uh, the second uh, property is the ductility, and uh, their uh, connectors could be rigid or ductile. Uh, and uh, rigid connectors have limited plasticity and uh, couldn't be used for structures that you want to uh, design according to plastic analysis. Uh, and uh, uh, ductile uh, allow us to do this. And uh, it's a reason why uh, rigid connectors are mostly used in breaches and ductile connectors are mostly used in civil engineering uh, where it's uh, uh, interesting to use these uh, plasticity models for design and uh, uh, get some benefit from the ductility of the connectors. Well, uh, let's uh, uh, learn what uh, kind of stresses, what kind of uh, uh, stress strain behavior uh, have connectors in the real example on the, uh, and so for example, I will use uh, welded studs uh, that have a rounded shape and it's the most common and um, most popular uh, shear connector in the world. Uh, when we place this inside the composite beam uh, and it face uh, the shear force, we have to know that um, shear force has non-uniform distribution along the slab thickness. Uh, when it face uh, the connector, it evokes uh, some internal stress along the stud. And uh, if we place it in the real structure, uh, when stud is uh, surrounded by concrete, we see uh, the next picture. Uh, force uh, starts to uh, act on the concrete uh, that located in the uh, base uh, of the uh, connector on the loaded side, and uh, you could see it on the point A. And uh, this uh, volume of connector tr uh, transmits the uh, stress to the uh, connector itself. It starts uh, bending, it uh, face uh, tension forces, and it starts to uh, break uh, concrete uh, behind the connector. Uh, there you could uh, also see uh, the point D, it's a uh, friction that uh, exists between concrete slab and uh, I section, uh, but uh, its contribution not so huge as the uh, uh, working of the concrete and steel. And um, uh, reportedly to this uh, explanation, I think it's obvious that uh, two uh, uh, most uh, uh, common and possible failure modes in this case uh, uh, placed uh, on the slide. The first one, it's uh, uh, a sharing of the uh, connector in the zone of uh, welded collar, or uh, it could be crushed by, uh, uh, could be failed by a uh, concrete crushing. And uh, in this case, uh, we see that uh, uh, starts deforms, but uh, uh, not failures. And uh, if we want to uh, design this case uh, in um, uh, most uh, uh, amount of uh, different national design codes, uh, it's um, uh, applied uh, the next approach. We uh, calculate the PAD uh, shear resistance according to the steel. Then we calculate the, uh, the same uh, value according to the uh, concrete and uh, then uh, take the uh, less value from, from these uh, calculations. And you could see that uh, it applied by uh, different codes, which uh, have uh, only difference in, uh, in the, um, in the question of safety factors, but more, more or less, uh, it works in the same manner. Uh, it uh, it was the explanation for uh, welded studs that uh, have a simple form. Uh, but uh, what about other types of the connectors? And uh, for example, Russian National Design Code uh, SP two hundred sixty six have uh, for equation for. Uh, connectors which are made from uh, steel sections as uh, angles, channels, and uh, some uh, uh, other types. And uh, it also could be applied for the design. But uh, 
it's obvious that uh, there are so many types of the connectors and uh, it could be difficult to uh, to define the only one formula which will cover all cases and uh, for, uh, for for such uh, situations we uh, use uh, testing data and uh, other types of the connectors are usually uh, tested and uh, then let's learn how we could uh, de define this PRD uh, from the test. I think that the first uh, idea that uh, you could uh, have in this case, it's um, making a full floor uh, test, uh, which uh, mimics uh, the real structure. Yeah, and uh, if you uh, learn uh, uh, dozens of uh, research of uh, shear connectors and composite structures, of course, you could uh, face this uh, scheme. But um, uh, for the uh, sh shear connectors itself, it's uh, not so uh, suitable because in real structure, we uh, see that uh, connectors would be loaded in different manner. Uh, connectors that uh, are placed uh, on on the supports and uh, near uh, supports will be loaded more, uh, and uh, connectors that deployed uh, that's uh, installed in the um, in the middle uh, would be uh, st stressed less. And uh, it's a reason why, for this purpose, we usually use some kind of push test. And there, I put uh, the uh, most common classical uh, scheme from the Eurocode 4 NXB, but uh, you, you could uh, face uh, this uh, type of uh, testing in different uh, way, in different manner. Uh, what uh, Eurocode 4 uh, offers us to, uh, to do? We should uh, take a piece of I section and uh, can uh, connect it uh, with a pair of uh, concrete slabs by uh, some shear connectors. And uh, connectors, it's uh, 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 marked by uh, number three. And uh, when we apply the push load, it uh, imitates the uh, shear force which uh, connectors uh, face in the real structure. And uh, then we could, could define the uh, resistance of a single connector. During the testing, we could uh, measure the displacement of the I section and uh, this uh, number will um, help us to define the ductility properties of connectors and uh, uh, it's a, a standard scheme that applied by um, many different uh, national uh, code systems. And uh, when we face the same situation, the same connector in the uh, profiled uh, slab, when we have a steel decking as a formwork, we could see that situation is uh, uh, more or less uh, complicated uh, and more complicated than we uh, saw it in the solid slab. Uh, we have the same shear force. And uh, as uh, in, pre in previous case, it uh, acts on the a base of the connector uh, uh, on the concrete in this zone and uh, crush it. And because uh, uh, th there is less volume of concrete, it uh, uh, crushes uh, faster. And uh, then we usually see the situation when the head of the stud is anchored by concrete that, uh, uh, that has uh, suffers from uh, less uh, force. And uh, we, we see the situation uh, which is called in literature as uh, back, uh, uh, back anchoring uh, stress. And uh, in this case, uh, uh, connectors would, would be bent and there would be uh, two plastic hinges uh, along the uh, shank. Uh, and uh, the question how it would uh, fail you depends on the sum factors. Uh, at first, uh, of course, geometry of, uh, of the rib of the decking uh, plays the uh, most huge role. And, um, uh, but also 
or the uh, concrete strength uh, is important and uh, reinforcement and other cases. Uh, then uh, if uh, we have uh, enough uh, white uh, raw uh, and enough uh, you know, strong concrete, uh, it would be uh, valued by start sharing uh, as in case it, we have a solid slab. But uh, in uh, many other cases, there would be concrete pullout and uh, we, we would see the concrete uh, cone uh, after failure. But uh, you see that these uh, cases are most common and uh, we usually face one of uh, two uh, when we place the connector in the center of the uh, row. Uh, but uh, in real practice, there are many uh, types of decks exist that uh, have a stiffener and uh, this stiffener could be uh, placed in the center of the deck. And um, in this case, they're possible to have for uh, two uh, scenario. We could uh, install connector in favorable or strong position uh, re uh, related to the shear force, or we could install it in the unfavorable or weak position. And uh, when we place it in weak position, uh, it's uh, obvious that we would have uh, less concrete than uh, in uh, any other case, and uh, it's prone to failure by rip punching. In, and uh, it's uh, uh, the, the worst case, but uh, of course, uh, we should uh, remember that uh, it's uh, possible to have it. Uh, then let's uh, learn some uh, practical engineering uh, approaches, so which allows us to estimate how the deck geometry and other parameters uh, affects on the uh, strain stress behavior of the connectors and what the um, shear resistance we would have in the real structure. Uh, let's learn it. And um, th uh, the first approach which I uh, want to share with you, it's uh, a classical uh, equation of Grant, Fish and Slaughter which uh, had been offered more than 45 years ago. And the approach is simple as a pie. We take the uh, PAD uh, shear resistance uh, from the solid slab and multiply it on reduction factor, uh, which takes into account uh, uh, deck geometry and uh, some other parameters. And uh, yeah, it's um, uh, simple. Uh, it provides uh, uh, conservative results for many cases, for many types of uh, uh, shear connectors. And as you could see on the slide, it applied by uh, many national design codes. And it's a uh, base of uh, uh, most uh, calculations in the world. However, as you could see, it uh, uh, pay no attention to the position of the stuff. And uh, it's a first problem. The second problem that uh, the approach was uh, based on the uh, welded stud uh, testing and welded stud researchers. And uh, uh, if we apply it to the other type of the connectors, it, could, uh, it couldn't take into account uh, all uh, specific, uh, specific uh, properties and uh, uh, conditions. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, in some cases, uh, their concrete rate could uh, play, play the role in some ribs, but uh, there are no, no attention to it also. And uh, it's a reason why uh, we have uh, some uh, investigation that had been uh, made after Grand Fisher and Slaughter. And uh, the, the first one, it's uh, uh, approach of uh, uh, Mark Lawson, uh, which is based on idea of uh, Motram and Johnson uh, that were uh, two uh, years uh, before Lawson. And um, uh, the idea is uh, uh, add into the classical formula additional parameter. It's a E uh, distance from the center of the stud to mid height of decking web on the loaded side. And uh, uh, it uh, allows us to 
make a calculation not only for middle position, but for uh, strong and weak also. Uh, but it isn't it. And uh, I want to share with you another one approach uh, that is uh, totally different. Uh, it's the idea of Hawkins and Mitchell, uh, who were investigating uh, shear con connection on the cyclic load, and they uh, got some different uh, failure modes and notice that uh, the resistance have uh, the resistance has relation with uh, the uh, failure surface. Uh, if we uh, imagine the uh, pyramid, uh, which have uh, for forty five uh, uh, angle, uh, and uh, uh, this uh, parameter. Uh, could uh, lead us to the uh, shear resistance of, of this uh, connector. This uh, approach uh, had been enhanced by Chayas and Hussein, who uh, adopted to the metric system because Hawkins and Mitchell were Americans. And uh, they added another one uh, factor, uh, which uh, takes into account a concrete uh, density. Uh, and uh, it uh, also <laughs> isn't it, uh, because I have uh, two another approaches, uh, most modern uh, and uh, more precise than previous. Uh, the first one is the approach of Johnson and Yuan, uh, which is based on the uh, mathematical uh, models of uh, five different uh, failure modes. Uh, three of, of them we um, discussed before, and so two of them are combined. I uh, put the only one on the slide to save the place. And uh, at first glance, you could uh, think that uh, the approach is uh, complicated and uh, there are so many uh, factors, so many formulas, but in fact, it uh, operates the same uh, parameters that uh, previous uh, approaches, and uh, it takes into account rib geometry, um, uh, height of the stud, and uh, uh, some difference uh, that uh, it also has uh, um, age distance and uh, uh, spacing distance between the uh, group of studs. Well, uh, and uh, uh, the main disadvantage of this uh, approach that we, uh, in ideal situation, we have to know the uh, failure mode bef <laughs> before we test uh, or before we design the uh, structure. Of course, it could be uh, complicated, but I think that uh, uh, for real practice, we could calculate uh, uh, the all cases and choose the, uh, the worst. And uh, the last one, it's an um, uh, approach of uh, Matthias Conrad, uh, who uh, analyzed uh, dozens of research uh, and uh, made his own test and uh, learned that uh, uh, it could be uh, described by a uh, more easy and universal formula. He, he offered uh, a, uh, matrix of uh, coefficients, which uh, uh, should apply, uh, should cover all uh, cases uh, in the scope of the uh, Eurocode 4. And uh, as uh, you noticed, all these uh, approaches were based on the uh, welded stat uh, investigations. And uh, it's uh, interesting for me to uh, see how they could be applied to uh, my subject. And uh, I'm uh, working with uh, Hilti XHUB uh, share connector system, which uh, consists of these uh, ductile uh, connectors, which uh, could be fastened by a pair of nails uh, with the help of a uh, powder actuated tool. And it's a reason why they, they have so uh, complicated uh, uh, naming that you could saw in the title of the presentation. And um, uh, I you know, uh, test them. And uh, as I said before, it's interesting to 
uh, estimate the applicability of different approaches, but uh, uh, as uh, uh, XHUB is uh, uh, used in Europe, it has uh, ETA approval, uh, European Technical Assessment, and uh, in ETA, besides the uh, characteristic resistances for solid slabs, uh, you could face these two formulas. Uh, it's a, a key T factor. Um, in fact, it's the same formula that Fisher, Grant, and Slaughter offered, by, but it was adopted by Kuhlmann, Eggert, and uh, Reininger uh, for uh, this type of the connector. And it, uh, this approach takes into account the uh, connector geometry and the uh, possibility of installing it uh, in parallel or in tr uh, transverse position uh, to the uh, sharing force. Uh, then uh, we go smoothly to the uh, main goal of my research and uh, uh, this uh, uh, sense of uh, my work and so uh, what I want to uh, get after this, uh, uh, this research. Um, as you could see, uh, we have some specific uh, decking in Russia. Uh, the specificity uh, is related with the uh, aim of these uh, decks. They were designed for roofing, but uh, not for uh, formwork. But historically, they are used for this purpose. And uh, they uh, all have stiffeners in the middle and um, they uh, have uh, and narrow and uh, deep ribs uh, which uh, creates uh, not the best uh, conditions for shear connectors working uh, not only the nailed connectors but uh, any type of them and um, it's interesting for me to uh, check the applicability of different approaches for uh, this uh, decking uh, market and uh, for uh, sh nail share connectors uh, which are placed inside this uh, uh, inside this deck and uh, uh, during my research I noticed that uh, uh, in our national design code in SP266 there are uh, no words about uh, weak or strong position uh, and so uh, requirements for uh, placing are uh, uh, not so uh, tough as a European one. And uh, it seems to me that uh, uh, there could be um, unreliable structures be designed according to this uh, standard. If my uh, hypothesis is uh, correct, maybe I could uh, um, highlight this problem by my research and uh, make some uh, provisions for uh, this national code enhancement. Well, and uh, uh, during my research, I prepared and executed uh, this uh, four stage uh, test program. The first stage uh, is a simple shear test of, of a nail. Then I um, executed five series with three specimen in each uh, of uh, push test with solid slab to get uh, reference uh, data for different uh, connectors height. And then two stages of uh, uh, profiled uh, slabs. Uh, the third uh, stage consists uh, six series uh, and uh, all these cases are covered by ETA approval and uh, by SP266, uh, that obvious. And uh, the, the last case uh, is allowed by uh, SP, by, but banned by producer of the connectors. And uh, it uh, was interesting to me uh, to, to know uh, is, it, uh, is the situation is crucial or maybe it's uh, not a big issue. Uh, well, we started uh, from the scratch, and uh, uh, then um, uh, maybe nothing interesting. We uh, made some tests, got uh, 
uh, the same failure mode with uh, and values with low scatter, but uh, I uh, will ask you to put uh, the characteristic resistance in your memory because uh, I noticed something interesting and uh, it would be uh, useful for us to compare this value with uh, some another uh, that I will uh, tell you further. Then I uh, executed uh, second stage and uh, uh, noticed that uh, in many cases we got uh, uh, the same failure mode. Um, most uh, specimens were failed by uh, uh, nails shearing. In some cases, uh, maybe in 10%, we had a pull out uh, or combined uh, uh, failure mode. But uh, as, as I said before, uh, sharing nothing um, interesting. Then I uh, made an uh, evaluation of the results and compared it with uh, uh, test data that uh, other researchers made before me and uh, compare uh, all this uh, stuff with uh, the level of characteristic load and design load, uh, which uh, ETA approval provide to us. Uh, and as you can see, we could surpass uh, all this level in all cases. Uh, everything fine, uh, connectors works uh, in ductile manner and uh, uh, nothing special. But uh, as you could uh, see, uh, the worst case uh, there, uh, in, in the worst case, we uh, have the resistance of a single connector more than 30 uh, kilonewtons uh, per connector. And um, I uh, re uh, recall the, uh, the first stage when we got uh, the, <laughs> the less value. And uh, uh, if we make a comparison, we see that uh, uh, on the characteristic level, the difference is near uh, uh, two, two times. And uh, it was, uh, uh, it interested me a lot why it could be. I uh, and I learned some papers, and uh, uh, it's happy that uh, happiness that I found a paper of uh, Nina Gluchovich, uh, who executed the uh, uh, finite um, modeling of the connector, and uh, according to her analysis, a connector. Uh, uh, connector um, it distributes the uh, load along the shank, and um, uh, when uh, it applies uh, the load to the nails, it makes them uh, to uh, to stress in combined mode. And uh, in in the fact, we uh, have uh, not only shearing but pull out also, and uh, it's increased the resistance of the connection and uh, makes uh, the whole system works more efficient uh, that uh, uh, the single connectors, uh, the single nails uh, could provide us. And uh, when we uh, clarified uh, the situation with solid slab, I start to the next stage. And uh, there you could see some, uh, some specimen from the third stage. Unfortunately, I lost uh, test data from uh, series N75-2 uh, because uh, I had some technical uh, issues with, uh, uh, with um, measurements and uh, the, today it's excluded from the list. But uh, all other cases are available and um, I prepared some uh, calculations according to the different uh, approaches, and there you could see them on the slide. Uh, and uh, it's uh, clear that uh, uh, all approaches could surpass uh, uh, all um, our expectations in uh, any case, except of the last one. Uh, in the last one, we see that only Jason Hussein and Lawson uh, showed uh, enough uh, uh, 
enough uh, sufficient and conservative result. And uh, uh, it's okay. But I thought that it's strange that uh, ETAs uh, cover this case and uh, uh, the equation of, uh, of reduction formula should work for, for it also. But you could see that the difference uh, is high. And uh, it seems strange to me. And I decided to investigate this case uh, more deeply. And uh, I noticed that uh, two or three specimens were valued by uh, rib sharing as a value mode that you could see uh, on the photo on the slide. And um, it, it uh, seems strange to me. And uh, uh, I uh, were looking for the uh, for the answer in uh, uh, different uh, sources, and uh, uh, and uh, encountered uh, the paper of Stefan Hicks, who uh, faced the same uh, failure mode in his uh, testing, and uh, uh, he described it by um, in the in this way: uh, when we have a specimen with um, uh, with profile shifting, and um, in some cases uh, we could face the rotation of the uh, top rib. Uh, the, the, that uh, occurs uh, uh, due to um, a pair of uh, shearing forces uh, uh, rotated, and uh, in real uh, structure we never face uh, this effect because. Uh, in real structure, we have a life load on the floor and uh, it creates additional stress inside the slab and uh, it uh, uh, covers this uh, rotation process. And uh, this idea to uh, modify the uh, standard push test uh, by applying additional side loading and uh, uh, there, uh, according to his idea, it should should prevent uh, this uh, backbreaking failure mode, uh, and uh, it uh, seemed interesting to me. And uh, if this uh, hypothesis is correct, it means that uh, we uh, should exclude this uh, serious data from our list. And uh, it uh, means that uh, well, okay, uh, all these approaches cover. Uh, uh, all the specimen, uh, nothing special. Uh, but uh, yeah, if we would uh, know that uh, uh, the real reason is different, it means that uh, maybe it uh, doesn't cover uh, this uh, decking because it has uh, maybe too narrow rib, I don't know, uh, and maybe it should be uh, modified or restricted. Uh, but uh, as I said before, uh, this case should be investigated more, um, uh, more deeply. Uh, then I had another one uh, stage of testing. And there you could see that I, uh, I looked at uh, three cases with weak site. I tested uh, one and two uh, connectors in parallel to the shear force and another one with uh, uh, transverse uh, uh, position to the uh, to the force, and the last case it's a narrow rib with uh, one connector in the row, and according to the ETA, it's uh, mandatory to install uh, more than two connectors per the row in such cases, and uh, then uh, I compared uh, these results. You could see that uh, ETA column is eight, empty because it. Uh, uh, doesn't cover this case, and there are no reason to uh, to pay attention to it. And uh, then I uh, learned the uh, the other equations, uh, and so you could see that uh, unfortunately uh, no uh, there are no approach that uh, could cover all the cases. Uh, but uh, Jess and Hussein and uh, Conrad uh, showed them. Uh, most conservative results and uh, the difference in the worst case, the difference uh, between the testing and uh, design values uh, in the worst case is less than 
I think that uh, it's not crucial. And uh, if we decide that, uh, for example, Conrad uh, is uh, okay for this uh, out of scope cases, we could uh, modify it or apply a safety factor to the formula and it would co cover all cases with sufficient uh, reservation. And uh, uh, then uh, I could uh, go to the some conclusions. And uh, uh, as I said uh, before, it's interesting to investigate uh, this uh, strange cases with uh, uh, narrow ribs and uh, I'm I think that uh, there should be additional uh, testing executed or uh, finite elements modeling uh, made and uh, after that we could uh, make a, a final point in this uh, story and uh, uh, make our judgment uh, if we uh, will not pay so much attention to some uh, uh, slim cases. Uh, it means that uh, all approaches that uh, were made for welding, welded studs uh, are applicable for nail connectors also uh, within the scope of the ETA approval, of course. Uh, for the out of scope uh, cases, uh, it's better to use uh, JS and Hussein or Con Conrad's uh, uh, approaches and uh, according to my private uh, opinion, Conrad is better and I see the high potential for this and uh, to make it universal uh, for all types of the connectors and uh, all types of decking. And uh, it's mean that uh, our national design code is P266 need to be updated with some provisions that would cover this uh, uh, blind uh, places that we have right now. And uh, I'm going to continue my research with uh, making some uh, modeling in Abacus. And uh, uh, then we could uh, check all, all the uh, complicated and interesting issues. And uh, it's also interesting to me to make some investigation of uh, uh, deck that called N114. I will show this ge geometry on the uh, slide. And uh, what's the purpose? What's the interest? Uh, you could see that it uh, takes uh, the huge part of the uh, local market of decking, uh, but um, it uh, has uh, so uh, deep deck and uh, uh, European, for example, uh, uh, for, for example, European equation have a restrictions with uh, 40 uh, millimeters. Uh, in, in Russian code, there is a blank page. And uh, uh, I think that uh, it's uh, uh, not because it was investigated. I think uh, nobody thought about it. And uh, uh, it's also interesting to me to check the applicability of different approaches for this case and for uh, and it could be nailed share connectors or connector or something another. It uh, doesn't matter. It's interesting to uh, to check their decking. And uh, after that, I think I will I will, will I will have a sufficient amount of data to uh, issue, prepare some recommendations for uh, designers, and uh, then we will. Uh, have an opportunity to make uh, more rel uh, reliable structures and uh, ha have a better life. Uh, that's all. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you uh, for being there. And if you have any questions, please ask me. Denise, thank you for your very, very interesting presentation. I think it will be useful for, for all engineers and uh, other uh, scientific stuff. So, uh, please be ready. We have uh, plenty of questions. Uh, I will use my position as a host and uh, uh, will ask you uh, first. Uh, uh, what kind of software did you use to calculate uh, the shear capacity of your DEX labs? Uh, we, uh, in Europe, there is available 
some kind of uh, Hilti software, but uh, uh, the, it uh, doesn't cover the SP266. And it's the reason why uh, we using uh, Excel, <laughs> Excel calculations for, for this case. All right, so it was uh, your self-made. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's a self-made solution, and uh, I hope that one day it, uh, this approach would be applied by some uh, local software. All right. Uh, so, uh, uh, if I missed, uh, uh, does our design code SP two hundred sixty six cover uh, the design of uh, these new connectors or not? Uh, yeah, uh, after the last uh, update that, uh, that took place uh, three years ago, yeah, yeah, these types of connectors are covered by uh, SP. Right, but you need to enhance uh, recommendations uh, according to your uh, test data. Uh, yeah, and so you, you're totally right, but uh, there I have to um, uh, highlight the fact that uh, I'm investigating the nail shear connectors, but uh, this provision, uh, which uh, refers to uh, reduction factors, are universal. And uh, if it doesn't work for, for nail connectors, maybe it doesn't work for welded holes. And uh, I hope that uh, my work is uh, more universal. All right, thank you. And we have a set of questions from uh, Vlad Shekhovtsov. Yeah. Uh, the first one. Uh -huh. uh, maybe he missed, but uh, how is uh, the welded connection of the stud to the base mate? Is it uh, done at the factory or uh, and are the corrugated sheets already delivered with welded studs? Mm -hmm. Or not? Uh, yeah, the question is clear for me. There could be uh, two cases. Uh, both of the options are uh, available. In some cases, uh, uh, steel I sections could be came from the factory, but in this case, they're uh, difficult to install uh, to, to put uh, decking form work on it. It's an issue. And it's a reason why usually we put. Uh, I section, then we take uh, steel decking and weld uh, uh, studs through the deck. It's a, a most common practice. All right. Uh, the second question from Vlad is uh, uh, How many Hilti nails do I need to install uh, to ensure sufficient connection? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And he also asked uh, uh, how workers. Uh, uh, could they make mistake uh, during installation or not? Uh, yeah. yeah, I can answer that uh, uh, each connector should be uh, fastened by two nails. Uh, it's a, a standard uh, value and uh, uh, it uh, has a, a checking procedure uh, after, uh, uh, b b before you start uh, uh, working on the job site, you have to uh, make a fine tuning of the uh, of the powder actuated gun uh, and uh, um, choose the uh, right uh, powder cartridges. And uh, you make this fine tuning by measuring the height of the installed nail. Uh, they uh, the Hilti has recommendations for this type of nail and uh, for example it should be um, uh, between eight and ten millimeters roughly and uh, when you tune the the gun uh, you uh, will be um, uh, will be confident that uh, all connect uh, connectors will be installed correctly all right uh, the third question from Vlad, uh, what is uh, the minimum thickness of uh, corrugated uh, steel for nails to work correctly? Uh, to be honest, uh, I don't know uh, the term uh, corrugated <laughs> and uh, uh, let me um, make an universal uh, answer. 
if we're talking about uh, steel beam, the uh, thickness of the flange should be more than eight millimeters. And if we're talking about uh, steel decking, the thickness should be uh, more than uh, 0.5 millimeters and less than two millimeters of, uh, uh, of the package of uh, sheets. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, have you researched uh, how much the class of concrete increases the bone strength connection? Mm -hmm. What was uh, what uh, was uh, uh, the concrete grade in your tests? Uh, yeah, the question is clear for me. Uh, in my uh, research, I got uh, an near 40 uh, megapascal uh, of uh, of the uh, on the concrete cubes and uh, there was uh, no uh, reason for me to check uh, different uh, concrete grades because uh, i have um, uh, some investigations um, made in europe of, uh, for this purpose and uh, uh, the conclusion that uh, Concrete grades uh, uh, don't uh, uh, doesn't uh, affect on on the uh, shear resistance uh, as much as other parameters, and uh, there are also uh, some testing data available for lightweight concrete in Europe, uh, and uh, I think that my European colleagues could provide it if needed. Okay, what what about uh, high strength concrete? Uh, I think uh, it's uh, interesting to check, but uh, to be honest, I have never faced uh, the uh, floors which uh, have such uh, 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 such tough uh, concrete. All right. And uh, what do you think will happen if uh, we use lightweight concrete? Uh, I think. Uh, uh, no, I don't think I, I know that uh, in the uh, case of light concrete, lightweight concrete, uh, all cases, uh, all specimen would be failed by a concrete pullout. And uh, uh, the, the main result would be, uh, would be related with the rib geometry and uh, concrete parameter. Okay, but the capacity will be lower. Uh, yeah, would be low, but but uh, 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 not 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 so uh, low as you could imagine. Mm, okay. Uh, how is uh, the number of connectors uh, per one uh, square meter is determined? Uh, yeah. Uh, is it is a design value or it's just recommendations? Uh, the number is uh, defining by calculation. Uh, you uh, check the whole structure, then you uh, define the shear force, and uh, uh, according to the uh, SP two hundred sixty-six, you should uh, install um, this amount of the, of the connectors, uh, which uh, would uh, make the full interaction. All, all the structures and uh, uh, in the real practice we take the plot of the uh, shear force and install for example in some uh, ribs uh, two connectors per rib in some uh, uh, ribs one and uh, etc at the edges of uh, of slab yeah, yeah uh, right no we or in the uh, middle as well uh, we install it uh, uh, along the whole uh, contact surface. And uh, for example, if we have a, a great span or high load on the value, there more connectors should be needed. And uh, you could face a situation when you have to install maybe uh, two connectors uh, in each row. Uh, but uh, in other cases, you could install uh, some connectors only on the supports, but uh, in the span, the shear force would be so low that uh, it, there is no reason to make any connection. Okay. So uh, next question from me is, uh, 
Uh, did you study the influence of uh, bending moment uh, to the shear capacity or not? I think it, sh it should uh, influence. Uh, bending moments of uh, of the composite beam or what? Yeah, yeah, of composite beam. Uh, yeah, uh, I uh, didn't investigate it because uh, it's clear from the uh, design methodology that there is a direct uh, uh, bound between uh, the moment and the uh, amount of uh, shear force. Yeah, and if you have a uh, uh, greater moment, you would uh, have a greater shear force uh, uh, in the connection surface. Mm -hmm. All right. So next question is uh, from um, Vladimir Smotrov, who is, a, I, I guess, your colleague. Uh, uh, what uh, share uh, roughly in the percent of composite structures compared to normal steel structures we have in Russia. I mean, like uh, how popular uh, composite structures in Russia. Uh, it's an interesting question because uh, uh, in some, uh, uh, right now in Russia, we see that uh, uh, composite structure isn't so popular uh, as uh, a separate working structure, but uh, we see that uh, customers uh, uh, became more uh, more competent and uh, they see the benefit it's put estimated and uh, it's a reason why uh, we we face uh, these projects more and more and uh, uh, thank you for uh, FAB and uh, for RSS. Uh, Russian local association of uh, steel makers, uh, which uh, promote this uh, topic also, and uh, it's happy that we see this uh, case as more. All right, I think we have uh, answered almost all the questions, and. Uh, one more from uh, Vlad. Uh, are you installing connectors just to take shear force? Uh, after all, they are also ensure that the steel deck and concrete work together and can be thought as an external reinforcement. Uh, yeah, it's a popular question. And uh, there I should explain that there are two uh, types of uh, composites uh, uh, composite structures could be the first one it's a composite slab when we have uh, uh, the case that uh, Vlad uh, described when uh, uh, steel deckings uh, works as external reinforcement and the case uh, that's that was described by myself uh, when concrete uh, works uh, uh, with interaction with uh, steel beam and uh, these structures works in uh, different directions. And uh, of course, uh, uh, we could uh, have uh, concrete that works uh, together with uh, steel beam and have external reinforcement, but it's, uh, it's out of scope of my investigation. Because okay. in, re in real practice, there are some issues with uh, uh, fire resistance of uh, such reinforcement and uh, uh, I unfortunately don't know uh, any uh, real example of this uh, application. Okay. Um, my, I think my last question is, uh, uh, you know that we have uh, uh, different types of uh, sheets, yes, uh, yeah. uh, with the ribs uh, uh, as in your tests and uh, with the, some stampings uh, that we can use it as an external reinforcement. Mm -hmm. So if we use uh, this special uh, sheets with the ribs and stamps, uh, will it uh, improve the work for shear or uh, not? I think uh, stems uh, 
um, uh, make uh, no difference for shear connectors because uh, it's only for anchoring with uh, concrete. Uh, but uh, I should uh, uh, highlight that uh, uh, the deckings uh, which uh, have such stems are usually designed especially for external formwork and uh, uh, of course, they could uh, have uh, better uh, geometric properties for the shear connectors for the reduction factor. Uh, and uh, I uh, had an idea to um, make some uh, tests with uh, these uh, types of decking, but uh, they are not so popular in Russia and uh, uh, the uh, share of uh, market is, uh, uh, is more and more uh, less than uh, uh, decks which are made according to the goals. Yeah, here I can agree with you. Uh, and uh, the last question from Vlad, uh, please state again the ultimate goal of your research and uh, how it will help in engineering practice. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yes, I, I can repeat that uh, uh, the main goal is to uh, define the, the most optimal uh, design approach for reduction factor formula. Uh, and uh, uh, of course, I uh, investigated on the nailed shear connector example. But uh, uh, when I will have some proposition, it's uh, very easy to check it on the other type of the connectors if we will, will have such uh, testing data. And uh, I think that. Uh, uh, if such uh, uh, equation will be found, it uh, would bring us uh, uh, some economical benefits because uh, when you um, make more, more precise uh, calculations, uh, you could uh, use, uh, you could utilize uh, uh, the capacity of the connectors more and uh, uh, install less connectors uh, in, in the uh, composite structure. Okay. Uh, I can see that uh, there are no more questions. So, uh, Denis, uh, I would like to thank you again for your very interesting and uh, very relevant topic. I think this pre presentation was very nice and interesting so uh, thank you again and uh, maybe see you or somebody else uh, on the next uh, webinars so thank so, you Dennis, thank again you. Yeah, goodbye. Thank, thank you andre thank you to all spectators for their attention and uh, goodbye see you next time okay goodbye to everyone so we are finishing our uh, webinar so see you next time Bye-bye. Bye-bye.